this week we will be covering i mean we finished the upper limb last week and this week we'll be doing the lower limb uh, again just to um, uh, recollect we are dealing with the new system which is the 2018 modification uh, published in jot freely available source anyone can download this from google for for the information if required uh, so when talking of articular what exactly it is again uh, end segment is what we are dealing with it's not articular only now how do we define end segment we take the maximum width of the bones and then draw a square with that as a diameter and whatever falls within this whatever fracture falls within this uh, zone is considered an end segment okay so similar square for distal proximal okay only exception like uh, what was discussed previously is for proximal uh, femur the lower border of the lesser trochanter is taken and anything above that is considered the uh, 3 1 segment that is proximal femur end segment right so uh, ideally we should have start from proximal femur but uh, like told before proximal femur is an exception to most of the uh, classification that we have because in proximal femur we are dealing separately with trochanter fractures neck fractures and head so so that we i don't confuse you at the beginning we started with distal femur going downwards and then at the end we'll come back to proximal femur it's actually easy but so that there is no confusion and there is a continuity in the talk i decided we will do it this way so distal femur is exactly like what any uh, generic bone will be that a type a fracture is an extra articular fracture type b is a partial articular fracture and type c is an intra articular fracture right so this is very similar to generic classification that we know of now again like i told whenever there is an avulsion injury that becomes an a1 so if we have a lateral epicondyle avulsion it becomes a1 or even middle epicondyle avulsion it becomes a1 so both of these are a1 only thing is the fifth box becomes one and two lateral is one and medial is two okay and when avulsion injuries are taken out what remains is a metaphyseal fracture extra articular fracture so uh, uh, extra articular simple fractures is an a2 now uh, spiral fracture a21 oblique fracture a22 and a transverse fracture in a23 but like i told fifth box might not be remembered what we only need to remember in most cases is any extra articular simple fracture is an a2 fracture for the distal femur similarly uh, any extra articular fracture if it is wedge or multi fragmentary it becomes an e so pure wedge a31 multi fragmentary wedge a32 and then if we have a uh, multi fragmentary both comminuted then it becomes an a33 and moving on for a uh, type b we all know it's partial articular fractures again uh if you're talking of lateral condyle becomes a b1 similarly medial condyle becomes b2 and ophor becomes b3 in lateral condyle the fracture is through the notch that means this particular area is not bearing so uh the chances of arthritis or pain post surgery is much reduced so it is 33b1.1 if it is in the weight bearing same split fracture but going through the weight bearing articular surface it becomes 33b1.2 and if it is a fracture with combination of the articular surface it is 33b1.3 similarly for medial condyle through the notch to the articular surface and with the separate fragment is 33b2.1.2.3 okay and hofas if it's a lateral hofa we have b3.1 if it's a um posterior unicondylar hofa it is b3.2 and a bicondylar hofa it is called bilateral but the norm of uh, calling these is bicondylar hofa now it is so if it is both medial as well as lateral condyle it becomes b3.3 okay so anterior is b3.1 posterior is b3.2 and if it is bicondylar it is b3.3 so type c fractures we are dealing with intra articular fractures and c1 means that articular simple metaphyseal simple so if the fracture is above the transcondylar axis now remember that epicondylar axis is somewhere at that level and if the metaphyseal fracture is above this that means there is enough bone stock for us to put in a plate and put in enough screws right so this is a much simpler pattern than compared to something like this in which the fracture is through the epicondylar axis or even below now even if we fix this with a plate we will not have enough screws to be put we can put one or maximum two rows of screws uh which might not be stable enough so that is why this is given a c1.3 and this is a c1.1 okay so even though the articular is simple metaphyseal is simple 
but depending on where the metaphyseal fracture is, whether it is above the epicondylar axis or below the epicondylar axis or at the level of epicondylar axis, we have divided that into a further subdivisions. So C2 means we have an articular simple and a multifragmentary metaphyseal. Again, simple fracture with a wedge in the metaphysis is C21. Fracture with wedge, which is multifragmentary is C22. And then multifragmentary in the metaphysis with a simple articular is C3.3. I mean, C2.3. Okay. And then intraarticular, any combination automatically becomes C3, like what was told. So it doesn't matter what happens to the metaphysis. Now, for more clarification, uh, combination intraarticular, but simple metaphysial becomes C3.1. Communicated, com communicated with the wedge is C3.2, and communicated, communicated is C3.3. Okay. So they, they just further classified to make things much easier so that all classification can. I mean, all fracture patterns could be incorporated. Now, moving on to proximal tibia. Proximal tibia in the newer classification is very similar to generic, but it has also incorporated the shard square classification that uh, has nearly become the gold standard. Okay. So, again, generic wise, A1, I mean, A is extra articular, B is partial articular, and C is intra articular. So, A1.1. So, whenever there is an A1 fracture, if there is an, any evolution fracture, it comes under A1. So, it can have a, a, a capsular attachment like a C1 fracture or the tibial tubercle fracture or the tibial spine fracture. So A11, A12 and A13, these are all the evulsion injuries that can happen in the proximal tibia. And once the evulsion injuries are taken care of, the other injuries that can happen comes in A2. Okay. So extra articular simple fractures is A2. <clears throat> A21 is spiral. A22 is oblique and A3 is uh, transverse. So if you can see it is very, very similarly following the recent femur classification that we just spoke about. Now, a3 fractures means it's an extra articular with wedge or multifragmentary. So you can have a wedge, wedge broken or multifragmentary, same A31, A32, and A33. Again, similar to a distal femur. When you're talking of a B fracture, now this is where much things have been incorporated. Look, if you look into it carefully, uh, uh, B is partial articular, we all know. Now in B1, it means it's a pure split fracture. So what is shard squares? one or shard squares four okay a pure split fracture of lateral tibial plateau is b11 pure split fracture of medial tibial plateau is b12 and a split fracture which actually going obliquely but involving either of the tibial spines it is b13 okay so shard squares one and shard squares four are covered in this particular b1 type of a fracture now a b2 fracture is a pure depression fracture so that is a shard squares type two uh, Shatsikar side 3. Okay. So, lateral tibial plateau. So, we all know that uh, it's mostly the lateral tibial plateau which goes into pure depression. So, if it's lateral tibial plateau, it is B21. Medial tibial plateau depression is very, 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 very uncommon, but reported in one of cases, um, uh, anecdotal a few cases here and there. So, even that has been given as particular subtype so that if someone wants to report it, it can go into that particular classification. Okay. But we all know lateral is the most common thing which goes for uh, depression injuries. Now, when you're talking of split depression fractures, uh, it goes in uh, B3. Okay, now the split depression, lateral condyle, split depression. So, type 2 shard scars. So, this becomes a B3 one. A medial uh, plateau split with some depression, like I told, again, very uncommon, but given a subcode. So, this becomes a B3.2. And then this is a very, very common injury that we always see that we have a medial condyle split fracture and a lateral condyle depression fracture near the midline or just adjacent to the midline next to the tibial spine, right? So if we classify this uh, as per Schatzker, this goes under type 4 because the column injury is only medial and the depression is as such uh, not to be considered. But now, this is completely different from an isolated medial condyle fracture, treatment-wise, also prognosis-wise. And that's why this system has given a separate entity of a B33, which is that uh, medial condyle fracture with the tibial, uh, I mean, uh, lateral to tibial spine depression involving the other column, okay, other condyle rather, okay. So, that's where uh, things can be useful when we describe things. And a uh, C fracture, a C1 means simple intraarticular, simple metaphysial. So it can be a simple, simple without intercondylar eminence fracture, or it can have a separate intercondylar eminence fracture along with the simple fracture of the metaphysis and articular surface. So that can be a C1.2. 
And when you talk of a C2 fracture, it means an intraarticular simple with a metaphyseal combination. It can be a wedge. Combini wedge can be broken down into multi fragments, or it can totally be multi fragmented. Okay, but in all these, the articular fracture is simple, so it becomes a C2. And then whenever there's an articular fracture which is multi fragmented, it becomes C3. So again, like distal femur, C3 one means intraarticular. A multifragmentary and articular simple, intraarticular multifragmentary uh, of the medial plateau. So here this lateral plateau is C31, C32 is of the medial plateau. And then when we have complex multifragmentary of the entire metaphysis involving the entire articular surface, it becomes a C33. Okay, so this is how uh, proximal tibia is classified. Going forward, when you're talking of the distal tibia, again very, very similar to the genetic flexures. Now, um, first thing, like I told uh, in the last class, what we need to think is whether there are avulsion injuries in the vicinity of the area that we described. Now, many of us would like to think that uh, deltoid avulsion injuries or uh, antilateral um, uh, tibiofibula, distal tibiofibula ligament avulsion injuries are, are part of distal tibia. But mind you, these are all a part of rotational injuries and hence come under 4-4. The ankle injuries, the malleolar fractures come under 4-4 and not 4-3. Okay. So in this, we are describing the 4-3, that is the distal tibia per se, not involving the malleolar fractures, okay? So when we talk of 4-3 fractures, we are not talking of avulsion injuries at all. So automatically A1 becomes uh, extra articular simple fracture. So it can be spiral, oblique or transverse. And then A2 becomes, uh, uh, here they have, we have, they have included other fracture patterns which are commonly seen in distal tibia that the posterior lateral can go into impaction or there can be a wedge in the anteromedial part, or it can have a diaphyseal extension. Okay, so all are these. So basically, it is extra articular wedge pattern that we are describing of, and multifragmented becomes A33, can be either a wedge which broken down or totally multifragmented or extending into diaphysis. All of these are A3 fractures and A31, A32, and A33. 